Sewing machines today help us make so many wonderful projects. The first working sewing machine model, patented in 1846 by Elias Howe, was very limited in what it could do. But can you just imagine how magical that treadle machine seemed to ladies who in the mid-1800s had done everything by hand? Today's modern machines bring the same magic, but in a very different way. This show is especially for you. Welcome to my sewing room. This blouse is exquisite and I can't wait for you to see all the fun, fun sewing details. It's out of a beautiful, beautiful baby green uh, handkerchief linen. Now the tucks across the top that are so pretty are called Mexican tucks. And where these name, this name came from was the beautiful Mexican wedding dresses that are manufactured and were manufactured in Mexico. Then we have a wonderful piece of, of entredeau beading. And you know that I love the folded tucks. As a matter of fact, I love tucks. And then we have a pretty piece of puffing that comes down the front and then the trims on the bottom of this elegant, elegant and tailored blouse, even though it has so many heirloom techniques on it. Let's talk about the Mexican tucks. First of all, you're gonna trace the lines on. These are an inch apart. And then you're going to fold, finger press each one of these. Just pick it up and finger press. Then these tucks will be stitched um, just regular stitching, a quarter of an inch tuck. Now here's the fun. You can either use a straight stitch or you can use a feather stitch. You stitch down one side. Of course, you don't use straight and feather together. You stitch down one side and then what we do, after we stitch all of the rows down on one side, then we turn it up and stitch down this side, holding each one of these tucks down as we stitch down. Now here is what it looks like after you have done the stitching and this time it was done with that beautiful little feather stitch. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my very dear friend Missy Billingsley. Missy is an education consultant for Baby Lock USA. She's a Martha Pullen licensed teacher. She teaches at the Martha Pullen School of Art Fashions and at the Martha Pullen Baby Lock celebrations around the country. Missy, welcome to the show. Thanks so, Mar <laughs> so much, Martha. It's always great to be here. Thank you. And that beautiful blouse. Well, today oh. we're going to talk about how to create these tucks. Um, so what I've drawn done here is I have drawn some lines on my handkerchief linen and as she said these lines are about an inch apart depending on the size of your tuck will determine how far apart your lines are going to be drawn so once you have your lines drawn then as she says you're going to take and fold them in place now on some of these tucks I actually used a fabric folding pin so you just draw a line with your fabric folding pin and it allows you to crease that fabric very easily so then I creased every line so I knew where I was going to be stitching once I had all of my lines creased then I just used my quarter inch foot and the center needle position and I stitched my tucks all the way down as many rows as I needed to to fill up the amount of fabric that I was going to be using for the top of my blouse. Okay, once you have stitched those, the tucks across, then you're going to begin, I drew these lines, the vertical lines that are about an inch and a quarter apart. Again, play with your settings to see which settings you like best. So mine are an inch and a quarter apart. You could use a straight stitch or a decorative stitch. I chose the feather stitch because that's the stitch I like. So you're going to continue stitching all of your lines and they're going to look like this. So you have many lines going across and I've stitched, say we're doing one, two, three, four, five rows. I've stitched row one down, row three down, and row five down. Then I'm going to turn my fabric around and on my even rows, I'm going to stitch up the fabric. So I'm going to show you that on the machine right now. And we're set up for a feather stitch and our regular standard presser foot. And as I start stitching, I'm going to raise these tucks up out of the way. This is one of those times when it's nice to have a little bit longer fingernails because it helps it you pull the fabric up so it lays nice and flat as you stitch. Okay, so once you're finished stitching that line, and you want to stitch the whole distance of the line so you don't have a place that doesn't have the stitching. So once you finish stitching, then you'll move over to the next row and you'll continue on stitching the same type stitch. 
once you've finished stitching your, your sample technique, then this is what it's going to look like. And actually, on the sample blouse, what I did is before I actually stitched my upward tucks, I stitched the bridging onto the bottom because that way I had a straight line to follow and I knew that my fabric was going to be straight and even across there. But it's a great technique to use on, like you said, on blouses, on jackets, um, purses, aprons, pretty much anything. And depending on the size of your tucks, it's going to determine how, how large your distance is going to be. Well, Missy, I love the technique. And you know what? I truly can tell you that I love this blouse. It is so pretty. Now, do you love working with handkerchief linen as much as I do? I do. It is so nice and cool to wear. It's, it's just a wonderful fabric to work with. Well, I love your tucks across the front. And then again, the puffing is so pretty and your, and your bridging and we have, just, we have tucks along the yeah, side. Tucks, the mm -hmm. folded tucks along folded the side, tucks too. Folded tucks along the side, but without, the, without making them without the waved the Mexican, Mexican ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, Missy, yep. thank yep. you so much. And now I have some sewing inspirations to share with you. Missy, this is adorable. We love little French bonnet. We do. They're so sweet. And I think there's a secret to this one, isn't there? There is. This one was done totally on the surgery. 30 minutes max. Yay. <laughs> now Fast I think and easy. we have a matching piece here. Look at this gorgeous christening dress. And would you like to tell us about this? Yes, this christening dress was made again on the serger. We have serger created pin tucks, then we have lace insertion, Victorian insertion. And the little trick on this uh, christening gown is if you look at the hem, the hem is turned up and caught into the lace insertion band. So you don't have to fool with turning in your hem, it's already caught in your seam. I love so, that. Fast and easy trick. And Missy, this wonderful handkerchief linen blouse again. Tell us about it. This one again, made on the serger. It has Swiss embroideries, um, beautiful handkerchief linen in the light blue color. Then we have beautiful uh, cover stitch pen tucks on the serger. A little bit of baby puffing right down the center. Extra um, bridging and edging on the sides and the, the sleeve hems. And this glorious green blouse with the Mexican tucks that I love so much. These are the tucks that we showed in the first segment. So you just make them a little larger and cut out your pattern piece and go. Then we have, again, puffing down the center. We have regular tucks on the side. And if you turn it around and to the back. And the surprise we say for our viewers is. The surprise is you get to have this little extra adornment on the back that gives you a little bit more embellishment to your jacket. So pretty and so much fun to make. Oh, most definitely. Oh, Missy, this is so cute. I think you teach this at the school, don't you? I do. I teach this at the school. And you know, aprons are all the rage now. Yeah, so um, they really came up, are. came up with this apron. And if you notice the pockets, it has Mexican tucks on the pockets. And then we have some machine embroidery and some ribbon that we've treated like lace insertion. And this beautiful dress. I think we're going to show our viewers later in the show how to do this beautiful Oh, machine embroidered uh, Actually, diamonds. you are. There's, um, these are machine embroidered diamonds, um, stitched as many as you can in the embroidery hoop on a water-soluble stabilizer. And um, you're actually going to see how to make that in just a few minutes. This is a magical dress as far as I'm concerned. It is. I was very pleased with how this dress turned out. Oh, yes. And now Missy has a so quick, so easy trick for you. Let me see, that is the most adorable little bag. I'm going to turn it over to you. Martha, this is the quickest and easiest little project on the serger there could ever be. It's a simple little zippered bag. It's got top stitching along the top edge to keep the zipper flat. And my fabric, you can't find a fabric like that. I made my own fabric. So we're going to show you how to do that. So first of all, on your embroidery machine, you can create your own fabric. This is one of... Um, from a design from one of our softwares, and you can just create all kinds of different motifs. You could add um, monograms to it, whatever. I've only surged around this because the fabric frays so bad, so you wouldn't normally have to do that in your regular project. So once you've created your That's fabric, so cute. Mm -hmm. it is, it's double-sided, it's just as nice on the inside as it is on the outside, so it makes it fast and easy. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put your zipper in, and notice I've put the zipper in on one side already, and I'm using the piping foot on the serger to put the zipper in. So I've placed the zipper in, then I'm gonna take my fabric and line it up to the second side of the zipper, and I have it pinned in place. That way, in case I have to run to the other room for some reason, it's in place when I come back and ready to go. So we're gonna open the zipper, and notice I've got a longer zipper. You always use a longer zipper on your serger than you need. That way you don't have to take a chance of getting anywhere near, the, near those metal stops. So then we're gonna go to the serger, 
with your presser foot up and your needles up, you're going to slide that zipper tape underneath the presser foot. It has a groove on the bottom of the presser foot that allows the zipper teeth to ride in that groove. So as you start surging, you're going to remove your pin and you're going to surge all the way down the edge of this piece of fabric. And you could use any size piece of fabric. Pivot your zipper tape off to the left. You never want to pivot off to the right because the right is where your cutting blade is. And it'll cut off your zipper and you don't want to do that. So <laughs> no. once you have your zipper installed, then we're going to close it up. See how nice and beautiful that is? But now what I'll do, rather than leaving it closed up, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch right along this edge here. And that's what's going to keep my fabric laying flat as I open my zipper. Okay, so top stitch along that edge on both sides, keeping the zipper folded to the inside of the bag. Okay, once you've top stitched, then you're going to surge down the side seams. Place your zipper how you want it to I have a little lap at the top of the bag, so if we bring the bag back up here, you can see I have this little lapped edge right up here. So place your zipper how you want it. You're going to surge down both edges. Once you've surged down both edges, then you'll put your hand up in here. You'll flatten out the corner, just like so. Flatten out your corners. And I surged about an inch from the edge right here just to cut off that little boxed corner. Then once you've cut off that boxed corner after your serger, you can see it creates a little dimension. Then you're going to turn your bag right side out, and here we go. We've got our little box corners on the edges. We've got our nice, beautiful top stitching. I could have done a decorative stitch as well, but a top stitch, straight stitch is just perfectly fine. Adds a little decorative embellishment. Then you could even put one of those cute little zipper pulls. Just make sure that when you put, if you put a monogram on it, make sure it's on the right side of the fabric, and think about your zipper. Sometimes if you're a lefty, you may zip from the right to the left, or if you're a righty, you may zip from the left to the right. So think about that next time you put your zipper in. Oh, Missy, that's a darling little person. What a cool trick about left-handed, right-handed. You didn't think about that, did no, you? No, I did not, Missy. I, know it. I just love it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And now I have some wonderful designer techniques for you. I'm so happy to have as my guest, Kathy Bernard. Kathy is the editor of So Beautiful Magazine. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Martha. <laughs> Today we have a magic, a pretty magic technique and embellishment for you. Ooh. It comes from Missy Billingsley, and this is an organza, or, or a cotton organdy dress, actually. And she's used machine embroidered medallions, connected them to create her own lace border, and then stitched them on. So pretty. Isn't and all pretty? of these were done by machine embroidery. By machine embroidery. Just beautiful. Yes. Well, let me show you how this is done. And the trick, of course, is wash away stabilizer. Thank goodness for our wash away products. <laughs> I love wash away basting glue. I love wash away stabilizer. It's just great stuff. The fun, the, the fun things to make sewing much more fun and than it used to be. <laughs> easy and time efficient. Yeah, That's yeah. true. Okay, we're going to start with this board. First, you want to uh, choose a machine embroidery design that will connect well to make a border. You can use hearts. Uh, shapes. This one's a diamond. And you want to make sure that you have a balance of, uh, you know, proportion on your garment. Now these were used on the skirt and of course for the bodice these would be too large obviously. So she's downsized them, chosen a smaller diamond and we're going to create six to go across this size six dress and there's going to be a little bit of room left over here by uh, the seam allowance and, that, and that's good. You don't want this to go into your seam allowance. So the next step is to hoop up some uh, wash away stabilizer, maybe uh, two ply, and stitch as many diamonds out as you can in a hoop. Now this one still has, the, these still have the, the stabilizer behind them and then you're going to soak them and wash them out, let them dry and iron them. They're going to be a little bit stiff because there's so much um, thread involved. All right, the next step is to join them with a tack stitch uh, point to point like this. Now I tried this under the machine just holding them together and zigzag stitching them with a tack stitch but it's much easier if you uh, pin them to paper tearaway stabilizer like this and then tack stitch them and remove the stabilizer. Uh, put as many together as you need for your border. Next you're going to pin this to your, your garment. We've of course drawn a, a guideline here and you'll need that line to line it up straight because these want to move and shift. Once you've done that, you're going to straight stitch on top, on the top zigzag 
area of this only. You want to leave the bottom free, of course. Then once you've stitched this, you'll turn it over and you'll slit that and fold that over. You don't want to cut next to your stitching at this point. You just want to fold it over. The next step is to, while it's uh, on the wrong side, you're going to zigzag stitch along that fold edge. And then you're going to pivot at this point, flip this over and keep zigzagging. Then you're going to cut this away right next to the stitching. And then you're, you're done, that you're done with your border. Everything's cut away on the back side. And that's how easy that part is. If you want to embellish further with the um, ribbon zigzag, this is set one inch away from this line. You just shape your ribbon using a glue stick product and then you zigzag along each edge. Now the trick to the zigzag is to use an 80 weight thread or a 60 weight thread and like a size 60 to 65 needle and you won't even see that zigzag stitching. We've got this ugly pink thread just so you can see it. But of course if you use your fine thread you'll never see this and it'll be a beautiful little zigzag. You want to make sure that you go back over and stitch your little miters once you've mitered that and bam, that's it. Isn't well, that magical? You know what? It is <laughs> magical. And Kathy, there's so many ways to use machine embroidery mm -hmm. for wonderful towels and, and fun things. Oh, that and would be then, great on a towel. Absolutely. Yes. And also for christening dresses. For, oh, yeah. This is a, a com first communion dress. It would be, yes. I would think this would be. Mm -hmm. But this is just a wonderful technique. I love it to be able to use machine embroidery, which we do love so much. Mm -hmm. Kathy, thank you so much. You're welcome. And now I have a very fun segment for you called I Love My Serger. I'm so happy to have as my guest, Alicia Welcher from California. Alicia is a Martha Pullen licensed teacher. She is an educator for Martha Pullen Company and So Beautiful Magazine, and she teaches at our Martha Pullen School of Art Fashion in Huntsville. Alicia, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Beautiful blouse you have Thank done. You. Tell me this was all done on the serger? It was almost all done oh, on the serger. Oh, except for the buttonholes, I bet. Alicia, Pretty I much. want to start first with this exquisite sleeve that you have done. Tell us about that. The sleeve is pieces of tatting and pieces of ribbon that have been joined using serger bridging. Oh, it is so pretty. Mm -hmm. And then the front of the blouse, let's see the, what we have here. The front it just has a couple more pieces to it. And it's all done um, using a cording thread instead of just a regular thread. So it gives a little heavier appearance, more like the thread that's used to make the tatting. With the tatted uh, beading, when the ribbon run through it, and then ribbon strips. And, and this, the bridging is actually all done on the serger. Yes, ma'am. So pretty and very tailored too. And I love this uh, sateen that, that you really can't, it's kind of a non-see-through. It's beautiful. Okay, okay. show us what okay. you did, your magic. <laughs> what we did is we actually, we cheated. Oh, I love it. We that are going to easy. use, yes, we're going to use a water-soluble stabilizer that has a tacky surface on one side. Okay. We took this and we set up our serger for a wide cover stitch with no thread and a very short stitch length. We ran just the, the stabilizer through it and then using the, the holes that were made by the serger needles as a perforation, we remove both sides of the stabilizer. Wow. Then we're gonna take our ribbon and our tatting and we line them up because now we know exactly where that serger is going to sew. We line them up so that the header of the ribbon and the header of the tatting are just inside those stitching lines. Then we're going to stitch this piece. Once we stitch that piece, we are going, it will look like this on the back side. And so this piece here is actually the stitching that we have put into this serge, or into this seam. And this is going to become our bridging once we get rid of the stabilizer. We will then repeat this same exact process for all of the pieces starting from the center out. Once those pieces are complete and they've all been stitched, we're going to reach inside in between the stitching and we are going to remove the paper out of that area. We don't want to do this until we're finished with the stitching because that stabilizer that's under there is sticky and if we had surged it with it in there it would have stuck to the bottom of our foot. Then once we have that done and we have all of it surged together we're going to wash out all of the stabilizer. This piece here shows what it looks like when we have washed out all of the stabilizer and then we are going to take, with a bodkin, we are going to run a ribbon through 
every other one of the little flowers that's in our tatting. And that will give us just a little bit extra of the ribbon in our, in our finished piece. Then we need to take that piece and attach it to two pieces of fabric, one on each side, in order to create the fabric from which the blouse is made. To do that, it's almost the same process. Under these pieces here is a piece of stabilizer that has been prepared exactly the same way as the rest of them have. This one, however, we're going to take the ribbon and we're going to put the header of the ribbon where it, where it has always been on these, but we're going to take the fabric, we're going to clean finish one side of it with our serger, we're going to turn that clean finish side over, and then we're going to butt the, the folded edge of that piece up to the edge of the ribbon. Then we're going to straddle that with our needle as we stitch this other piece together. Then we're going to take that piece that we straddled, we're going to push it to this other side on the outside, and we're going to turn it over and top stitch it with our sewing machine. And then we're going to get rid of the stabilizer just as we did this last time, and we wind up with a piece of fabric, this really pretty piece of fabric here from which we cut the front of our blouse. Well, that is just one of the most beautiful pieces of serging and, and bridging, and it's, it's truly elegant, Alicia. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing this with our viewers. You are so welcome. And now I have a piece from my vintage collection for you. Sometimes there are little dresses that just simply wink at you. When I purchased this little dress at, at Portobello Road in London in one of the little shops, when I looked at it, it was so simple and so beautiful and it winked at me and there are several reasons it winked at me. First of all, it's yellow. So, and ecru. It's so hard to find any little dresses of the Victorian era in color. It's a little beautiful little yellow organdy. Now, first of all, before I show you that beautiful color, I'm going to lift up the dress and show you that it really is all oh, between one eighth and one fourth inch tucks. Hold in all the fullness. They're released tucks. And there's entredeau in the arm's eye, entredeau around the neckline to attach the collar. And the little sleeves, I better show you that while I have the collar up. Those sweet little sleeves, what I call a little boy sleeve, a cap sleeve really. And although it's not a boy's dress. Uh, then this says just this beautiful little hand embroidery. Now let's come down to the skirt. Oh, can you imagine the hours some mother or grandmother spent making this beautiful dress? The skirt has the sweetest little embroidery. And I can almost bet that you're going to guess that the back is exactly like the front. Let me hold it up to let you see the back. It has little buttons and a little, um, the little string that goes in the casing to come all the way down. And just exactly alike on the front and the back, it's totally made by hand. I have a wonderful letter here from Barbara O'Brien from Virginia. Barbara writes, there's a wonderful lady in our company, Dominion Power. This is a power company. Uh, Bev Robinson, who's been sending care packages to the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan since we first went to Iraq. I can't even tell you how many boxes she has sent, but she averages 40 plus per week. She has spread her efforts among the whole company, allowing all of us to help. The Army sometimes doesn't supply enough niceties or amenities to the soldiers. One of the things Bev always sends to every soldier are pillows and pillowcases. Early last fall, she was asking for pillowcases, and I immediately thought, we can sew pillowcases, and Bev can send them. I posted one note on your Martha Pullen forum and another on Marie's Embroidery Haven forum, thinking I would post on several other message boards, and I would get at least a few dozen handmade pillowcases. Ha ha, Martha, to date, I have received over 800. 170 pillowcases. I never did post anywhere else. We had quilt stores and sewing groups, mothers and daughters, grandmas and grandchildren, brownies and Girl Scout troops, one fifth grade classroom, and many, many individuals sending pillowcases of all sorts. Thank you, Barbara, and your group from Dominican Power. Thank you for joining me. Won't you come back next time?